Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Game Changer Podcast. I'm David Villa, and today we're going to talk about embracing growth through change. Change is a word that I don't think we like from the very get-go, right? We are comfortable. We like the norm. We like to be um, aware of what's going on, and change is one of these things that I think bothers most anyone. But here's the thing I've learned about change. The one thing you can count on in life, in business, in your growth with Christ is change. And so we're going to talk a little bit about embracing growth through change. And um, let me just say this, number number one, understanding change, right? We're going to discuss the concept of change and its significance in personal growth and development. You know, even when you look at growing as a child, you know, you get a, um, we've had some grandkids recently have one on the way. And when you get them clothes, for instance, they're cute and as a newborn and even our uh, most recent baby and probably the one that's going to be coming in the next couple of weeks, they're going to be very small and they may not even fit into newborn clothing. So they have to fit into these preemie clothes. And you notice that even over a month or so, they outgrow these clothes. And so, you know, change is something that happens even from that standpoint. And, you know, looking at babies again, um, you know, they, they're constantly wetting their diaper or using the bathroom in their diaper. And multiple times throughout the day, you have to change them. And they get fussy when it's time to change. And, you know, it's amazing because they don't want to sit in it. But when you start to change them, they get fussy when you take their clothes off. And, you know, when you start to change them and they don't like that to be exposed and to be open and be cold. And uh, but, but change is something that even as a baby, we don't like, but it's necessary. I remember even Diana growing up and, you know, our, our, we experienced with our, with our kids. And I remember even when I was younger, um, hearing stories where my legs would bother me and they'd hurt. You know, and then the doctor told my parents, you know, it's just growing pains. I was talking to one of the guys in our sales room. He's six five, and he said his junior year of high school, he was a basketball player. He went from five seven one year to six five, literally grew almost a foot in one year, and that is change. Um, he had to change clothes. He had to change. I mean, it takes you know a year is not enough time to get used to being a foot taller. And that change is something that happens. And so, you know, change is inevitable. It's something that's consistent, but it's also significant when it comes to your personal growth and development and your growth in the Lord. And a scripture that stands out, we have a few scriptures here, but Romans 12, 2, it says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is his good and pleasing and perfect will. So there's been a lot of examples where change has been something that, you know, we've not embraced and still had to go through it because change is is inevitable. And there have been times where we've learned that concept and that's what we're bringing to you. And we've embraced the change and embraced the growth through change. So, I mean, I think one thing's consistent in our walk with God and over the years in our marriage and our business and everything we've done, raising children, change is something that's here to stay. Amen. It's here to stay. Sure. What do you think? <laughs> I'm not a person of change. I like um, something that's comfortable. I like. I, I'll just keep going until there's a need for it. Mm-hmm. But I do think that um, you know it's important to be open to it. I mean, I'm, I'm going back to the scripture that talks about that we have plans, and the thing of it is, is sometimes plans change. And that's the, what the Lord's trying to do in us. Like, right. We have a plan, but then not be so close minded to change that we, um, don't follow the leading of the Holy spirit. I think of that change is something different. So that's another thing I think same is not, is not change. And so I think sometimes we convince ourselves that we are making changes, but we're still staying in the same patterns, doing the same thing, expecting different results. If you want to see different results, you're going to have to change some of your habits, some of your thinking, some of the things that you do. So change is something different. Let me ask you this. So you said this, I'm going to put you on the spot. It's not in our notes. You said that you're not a person of change, which I took that. I mean, we all, we all change. We all have to but you said you're not a person to change. I'm taking that and you can clarify that you like comfort. You like something consistent. You don't like change very much, but then you're also sharing that, you know, the importance of changing. So how do you deal with that? How do you, how have you dealt with that? I mean, well, I think a lot of times, or what? <laughs> <laughs> sometimes, um, and sometimes um, fighting <laughs> if I'm being honest, but I think probably the thing that causes me not, um, 
to necessarily embrace change quickly is because it's fear probably it's fear driven so I think sometimes when change is coming there's a fear of the unknown what if um, what if you know that isn't the right choice what if that doesn't lead me to the answer that I'm needing what if so I think um, I'm I'm someone that tries to play it safe mm-hmm. um, I'm black and white um, and I just, I don't know. I think probably fear is what prevents me. How do I embrace it? Well, you just said it. The, like you said, the, the two words I wanted to, you said, what if? Like, what if? At some point, you have to ignore your what if and just go for it. Yeah. Um, and I'm not really a daring person. I'm, I'm going to, like, think about it and, okay, what's the best way? But I think sometimes that causes me to just stay in a rut. Um, I'm kind of reminded of... Um, we years and years ago we lived on in a house that had a um like a farm behind us and it was little tiny shetland ponies and they're really cute and here if, if i'm not careful this is what will happen to me it had this big pin pretty good sized pin that it could run around but it got used to it had this little rope on it and it would walk down one way and come right back and walk down one way and it began to make this little path this little rut in the ground and then once the rope was taken off of it it still just stayed in that rut not realizing that it had a whole entire like pin fenced in area that was probably 50 times larger than this back and forth back and forth Mm -hmm. that it never wanted to explore it never went out it never expanded itself beyond this you know you know, this span of back and forth, back and forth. And I think we can get guilty in that. We go through the same mundane. I'm going to get up at this time. I'm going to, you know, get ready, go to work, go through the motions of my job. I'm going to come home and cook dinner, get my family ready for bed. I'm going to go through my routines and we can get so rut routine oriented that I think change helps us to, you know, kind of like spice it up a little bit, change it up a little bit. But I think it leaves room when we allow change, we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us. And I think sometimes we're in these same mundane ruts and the Lord's trying to speak to us, but we don't want to get off it. We're just, this is, this is what's comfortable. This is what's familiar. This This is the way I've done it. This is what I know. This is the way that my mom did it. This is my dad did it. This is the way I've always done it. And I think, um, well, so I'm reading the Romans 12 too here. Don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, you know, what you said about that Shetland pony, I remember that. I tell that story often to our sales team for other reasons um, when we get into ruts. But a lot of times we're confined by our thinking. So that horse was no longer confined by the rope. But when he had, when it was loose from the rope, he was confined by his, the, the fact that his mind wasn't renewed. And so how do we embrace change as a Christ follower? Let's look at that. And, and a scripture in Isaiah 43, 19. So let me just say this. This is the thing. When you walk with Jesus, you're going to experience change because God is a God. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same, but he'll lead you in new paths. And so when you're in the wilderness, precisely in the wilderness, you know, these are times, a lot of times where we can become comfortable in the wilderness. It's an uncomfortable feeling, but we can become comfortable even in that wilderness season. In Isaiah 43, 19, this is what the, the word says. It says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So in the middle, even of the wilderness, God does new things. He takes us on new paths. You know, we're walking one way and it's the comfortable way. It's the safe way. It's the, it's the casual way. And then God says, no, I'm going to take you into this new path and it's going to be a new thing. And it's going to take us out of our comfort zone, but he's with us. And not only is he with us, according to Isaiah 43, 19, he's the one that's doing the new thing. He's the one that's making this, making it spring up. He's the one that's making a way in the wilderness. And so embracing change as a Christ follower, you know, I think it's important to grab a hold of the principles of faith that intersect with the idea of change. And, and so when we, when we, when we are walking through our journeys, and, and so the, the very faith definition is, right, um, you know, those things that, you, you know, calling those things that are not as though they were, um, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So it requires change to even reach out and embrace those things that we can't see, that we can't touch, that we can't feel. Amen. And so that's, I think, as a Christ follower, you know, my experience as uh, walking with Jesus is that he's going to carry us in ways that are going to constantly bring about change in our life, change that's going to make us ultimately more like him. 
And so there's a lot of biblical examples that, you know, that talk about this. And, you know, here's another scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, so if you're listening to this podcast, I'm going to make the assumption that you are pursuing a relationship with Christ. And, you know, the Bible says that if you're in Christ, anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. So even becoming a Christ follower, he changes your thinking. He changes your direction. He changes your focus. He changes your motives. Subtly over the course of time, he works out the things of this world by working in his principles. And that's found all the way through the Bible. Amen. And I think the change is imperative as a Christ follower to recognize that it's going to be consistent. Uh, so we had someone speak in our Make It Happen today, but um, they read Ephesians 3.20. Um, but I went back to the Message Bible on that because I thought it was such a good, like, illustration. I don't always read out of the message. I periodically will go to it just to kind of, like, get clarity or just a b- different understanding. But it's God can do anything you know far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. And I think that's how change comes. You know, God isn't going to come and push us into it, but he works gently. He's in us. So as a Christ you know, follower, as a believer, as someone that's accepted Christ, he's in us. And so um, it's like that little tugging, like he's going to um, dent- deeply and gently within us guide us. He's going to work it within us. He's going to guide us. And so I think sometimes, you know, where, you know, we can we don't always like to be told what to do. Mm. And so we resist that sometimes, but I think God has a way of gently bringing us to the point that we kind of just walk in it. And sometimes we don't even realize like there's just this change that's going on and it's coming from within us. And it's just before you know it, you look back and go, wow, I've really grown in this area where maybe normally I would pop off quickly. Maybe the Lord has been dealing with me and like, hey, think before you speak. That's scriptural, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Out of the heart, the mouth speaks, and like, what is, what am I putting in? What is coming out? And it's like he gently just guides us. Um, you know, I think sometimes, as especially as a new believer, you sometimes feel like I'm gonna have to change all these things. No, Christ in you is going to be working within you, deeply and gently, and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide you into change, into the next step. Yeah, um, that's good. So let's look at this. So you can you can bet on that you're gonna you can bet on resistance. The one thing that you can you can you can definitely take to the bank is that you're going to meet resistance while walking with Jesus, and you're going to meet resistance from not only the things that are common to anyone walking in this world, you know, range on the just and the unjust. But then, as a believer, then the enemy is not happy with that decision, and he's going to put roadblocks in front of you as well. So you're going to meet resistance along the way. So let's talk for a second about overcoming fear and resistance, because when you meet this resistance, you can shrink back. You can stay still, you can sit back, and then you could stop there, you know, and, and that and that can be something that you stop, and it can, it can cause you to stop for a long time. It can cause you to miss some really timings that God wants to do in your life and bringing some things into your life at an earlier time. And then so, but the root of that, you hit it earlier, is fear. So let's address common fears and resistance associated with change. What are some of the common fears that we have as believers when we're faced with the resistance that's associated with change? Well, I think probably fear of failure fear is, of a failure. Big, is a big one. Yep. That we feel like if we make this change, especially if it's leading us to a new direction, like we're, we're scared that maybe that's going to lead us to failure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think fear of making the wrong decision is a really big thing for me. I don't want to make the wrong decision, so I'll like ponder it and keep mulling over it versus just doing it and if i if i make the wrong decision knowing that god knows my heart but he's going to be there in that too that sometimes um, we don't always see the lack of decision as a decision and it's so even though i say oh i'm not gonna i don't want to make this change it's being made for me by not doing it yeah. and i my, my change is i'm going to change i'm going to stay the same and everything else is going to keep moving around me and i'm just going to remain here so everything around me may <clears throat> change but i've stayed the same um, and I think probably um, fear of what I might have to let go of. You know, I think sometimes when there's seasons of life where you're bringing change, sometimes that's letting go of, of maybe um, habits. Maybe it's letting go of people in your life. Yeah. Maybe it's letting go of um, 
a job that you felt comfortable in, but you feel like God's calling you into this. Maybe there's lots of things, but I think. So you have over, you have fear of failure. Yep. You have fear of what you have to let go of. And then you have fear of making the wrong decisions. Yep. Those are three big ones. Okay. So let me pull a scripture up here. And this is, so I don't want to, I don't want to try to simplify it, but it really is simple at the base because the whole found foundation is, is, is should be simple when it comes to the things of God. He doesn't make it complicated. It's just truth. And then of course there's work that needs to be done on our end to link up with what the word of God says. But let me give you a very simple scripture and let me, let me simplify this in the beginning and at the foundation, the foundation of overcoming the fear of failure, the fear of what I need to let go or, or I'm going to have to let something go or the fear of what if I make the wrong decision. I think the scripture in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So again, being in him, knowing that it's a new thing that God has brought up, knowing that it's a way that God is trying to bring, uh, some, a change that God is trying to bring into your life. That yes, there's resistance. Yes, there's discomfort. Yes, there is the unfamiliar. Yes, there are the apprehensions. But I know this is something that God is working in my life. It's just uncomfortable. And so then looking at the scripture, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And that brings me to, you know, really navigating transitions, right? There's practical strategies for navigating life transitions. There's transitions when you raise kids. There's transitions in your marriage. There's transitions, you know, during those seasons of of marriage. There's transitions in your workplace. There's transitions in your ministry. And so there's practical strategies for navigating those transitions and embracing change with faith, faith and resilience. But it all starts at the foundation of I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so to share some personal experiences and testimonies, I mean, we've had transitions while raising our children, you know, uh, transitions when they're younger, um, as they became, got, got into the middle school, high school age, college age, as they begin to date, as they begin, as they got married, as they have to make decisions on buying and purchasing homes and cars, as they started to have children, there's been transitions in our marriage on like being newlyweds, then being couples who are starting careers and raising kids and then, and getting into those areas where you become busy trying to make time. And then there's the empty nest that we're entered into in the last few years. And then there's the time where we're starting to now pour back into people people as well. And even in business, right? And so expert, we have personal experiences and testimonies, you know, that demonstrate the, the positive outcomes of embracing change when you align it with your faith. And we've, we've fallen short at that. We've, we've experienced and caved into the fears that you just mentioned, but at the same time, we've also had experience in what it's like to step out and embrace those, um, that change. And those fears seem sometimes to dissipate when God's on your side. And so, you know, navigating transition is a big deal, right? No matter where somebody's listening to us right now, what part of life they're in. Agreed. You know, when you're talking about that, I was kind of thinking sometimes success in, in an area warrants change. And honestly, sometimes disappointments actually bring us to change because maybe we were disappointed in something. And so we it has caused us to make some changing changes um, in areas of our life that maybe we were, we rec- recognized that the path we were going was not bringing the result that we were hoping for. Um, and so I feel like that's a big thing too. change sometimes is hard, but it's necessary. But I think sometimes we come to a point of having to realize there's change because of maybe a disappointment that's happened in our life. Um, we don't want to talk about that a lot as, as Christians. We a lot of times want to talk about all the good and, and God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. But we do come through seasons where we face, um, you know, heartache and disappointment and, um, you know, failures, hurts. And, you know, sometimes those are, are allowed in our life because it, it may be because there were warning signs of change that we needed to make, but because we were so resent, resistant of change, it allowed these areas in our life to, to come in and maybe cause um, disappointments and hurts and things like that. Yeah, <clears throat> that's good. Um, you know, let's, let's talk here in the la- last point, um, the role of community and support. How do you get through it? You know, you can, you know, listening to podcasts like this, right? Getting into God's word, praying, having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ is first and foremost, but it's important to attend church, get into small groups, 
and get around a community, even here at our office, because we're a marketplace ministry. There's a group of people here, obviously, that love the Lord, and we could find that community and that support amongst people that God places us around. So I think the importance of community and support in navigating change and fostering growth can't be understated. And, and so let's let's discuss that, the significance of fellowship and encouragement within faith-based content. How important is it to get around people right, that are going to encourage you in the things of the Lord, to, that are going to tell you what the Bible says and what God says, and they're going to encourage you, you know, in faith. And I think that's super important, you know, for the believer to be careful who they get their advice from. Well, I mean, there's a scripture about that, iron sharpens iron, but if we're not careful, we'll connect ourselves with people that'll, that will dull us. Um, you know, I think that's really important is already have those key people in your life that you trust that their um, motive and their heart is pure towards wanting God's perfect plan for you and your family in your life. Um, so that when you do have those times, you're, you're, you're going to those people that have given, that you've already determined that have, you know, sound, um, biblical beliefs that they, um, have a a motive to to want good things for you you need to already have those people because unfortunately a lot of times it's kind of like the old saying like at the water cooler people gravitate a lot of times to the the water cooler the people that want to have the conversations that they want that are going to go in the direction that they're desiring that the outcome you kind of know those people so i think you already have to have some predetermined people that you know that no matter what they're going to love you enough to tell you the truth even if it hurts and even if you may be offended by it. Yeah. Um, you need to have those people already like picked out in your life. And, and, and the Lord does bring people in at different times too that maybe do not know your situation or do not know you much, but they have the, um, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is leading them. So I believe that is, but I think you need to have some people that you already know are for you and yeah. not against you and that God's brought in their life, in your life, and that are not afraid to offend you, but are more, um, you know, more, they want to see the best for you, God's best for you, not anything less than God's best. Um, and sometimes those conversations are hard. I've had to have those conversations where maybe they didn't even invite me into that, but I love them enough to say, hey, I noticed this. Is this what's going on? Okay, well, this is God's best for you, and I don't want you to accept anything less than God's best for you. And um, and God puts those people in your life, and you have to be willing to be open to to allow them to speak and to hear it and hear it under the context of the Holy Spirit guiding your thoughts and your responses in it. Yeah, very good. And so I want to encourage you as we wrap this up today to reflect on your own personal transformation. You know, I want to encourage you, reflect on your experiences of change and growth. And so, you know, some prompts for self-reflection and personal assessment, you know, based on this theme, I think that, you know, some prompts are, you know, asking the Lord, you know, as you reflect on it, God, how am I doing in this area of change? You know, I, how, is there anything that you need to show me, God, that I have shrunk back on? Is there anything that I've given into? Is there a fear that I've allowed to stop me from embracing change that you wanted to bring in my life? You know, God, are you speaking to me about stepping into a different direction or turning a different way or doing something different or trying something different? You know, um, and, and I think that's very important. If you ask the Lord that, um, I believe that God will help you understand what those things are, and you'll get a clear voice. A lot of times we have different voices, and if you ask the Holy Spirit, all the other voices will just fade away, and you'll be able to hear what God says on this topic. And so just kind of recap the, the points that we talked about today. You know, understand change. You know, understand that change is there. It's here to stay. It's the one thing consistent in our lives as our walk as a believer, and it's it's never going to stop happening. Change is the one thing you can depend on. Then you have to embrace the change as a Christ follower and then expect resistance. And then in that resistance, you're going to be faced with the fear, the fear of failure, the fear of what do I need to let go of, the fear of what if I make the wrong decision. And then you have to find ways to overcome that fear and then navigate the transitions because there's going to be constant transition. And if you can learn to navigate those, then, you know, change will happen, but it'll, you'll, you'll, it'll be a, it'll, you'll look at it more as a transition versus, um, versus a change of direction, um, and, and, and something that's going to rattle you. And then of course, the role of community and support. And, you know, I want to encourage you, those of you listening today, embrace change as a catalyst for growth. You know, it, it's a, it's a springboard for growth. It is designed 
to bring about and, and lay down things that are holding you back and pick up things that God has intended for you to pick up. And then you have to trust in the faith that God's placed in you during the times of transition. And I think that those are some ways that we can really embrace growth through change. What do you think? To sum it up, do you have anything to add to this? I think also when you're you're in seasons where you know things that God's requiring you to grow in a certain area and you're trying to allow those changes to take place and, and activate them and walk in them, I think you have to find um, the places where you see progress. Every bit of progress, and I say this a lot because it's so true, is you have to celebrate the progress no matter how little it is because it's all these little bits of progress that ultimately you look back and go, wow, how did I get here? That seemed like while I was going through it, it was forever and a day. But when I look back, wow, how far have I come? So I think you have to find ways to also celebrate the little bits of progress um, and and recognize it. Ask the Lord to show you where there's been growth in that area. I think if you know that there's an area God's calling you to grow in, I think you need to write that out. And then you need to put practical steps and practical things that you need to implement in your life to be able to begin to cultivate um, the season of change for that growth. <clears throat> I'm going to read something as a kind of a, uh, um, about change here. Change is something that presses us out of our comfort zone, is destiny filtered, heart grown, faith built. Change is inequitable, not a respecter of persons. Change is for the better, not the worse, depending on where you view it. Change has an adjustment period which varies on the individual. It's uncomfortable for changing from one state to the next upsets our control over outcomes. Change has a rippling effect on those who won't let go. Flex is the key. Even a roller coaster ride can be fun if you know when to lean and when to create balance within the change. Change is needed when all the props and practices of the past no longer work. Change is not comforted by the statement, just hang in there, but with the statement, you can make it. We don't grow in retreat but through endurance. Change isn't fixed by crying, worrying, or mental treadmilling. Change is won by victors, not victims, and that choice is ours. Change is awkward at first. Change is a muscle that develops uh, to abundantly enjoy the dynamics of life set before us. Change calls on strength beyond any one of us. Change pushes us to do our very best. Change draws out those poised for a new way. Change isn't for chickens. Change does have casualties of those defeated. Change will cause us to churn or to learn. Change changes the speed of time. Time is so slow for the reluctant, and yet it's a whirlwind for those who embrace it. Change is more fun to do than to be done to. Change seeks a better place at the end and is complete when you realize you're different. Change is measured by the impact on all who are connected to it. Change is charged when you are dissatisfied with where you are. Change doesn't look for a resting place, just the next launching point. Change is only a waste to those who don't learn from it. Change happens in the heart before it's proclaimed in our works. Change chaps those moving slower than the change itself. If you can change before you have to change, there will be less pain. Change can flow or jerk depending on our resistance to it. Change uses the power invested in the unseen to reinvent what is seen. Change is like driving in a fog. You can't see very far, but you can make the whole trip that way. Change is here to stay. That's good. Amen. That's good. So I think growth begins with change. And, um, you know, with a Christ follower perspective, providing insights, encouragement, and practical advice for embracing change, that's a means of personal and spiritual growth. Amen. 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 Why don't you pray for those attempting to change today and walking through it? Father, we thank you um, for those seasons of life where, God, that you're calling us to grow. Father God, grow in deeper relationship with you, grow in an area. Father God, and I just thank you that um, you, God, have equipped us. Father God, that you, if you've put this before us, God, that you are, you have given us all we need to to be equipped for that, Father. And so I just pray for each and every listener today, Father God, that maybe in this season of change, I just pray that they would just trust you, Father God, that they would not look to the left or the right, but Father, that God, they would. Uh, push in deeper into you and your word, God, and ask for the leading of you, God. They, though um, In Proverbs, 
Trust the Lord with all our hearts. Lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, acknowledge you, God, and that you would direct our paths. And there's some versions that say, make our path straight. So, Father, I just pray as they're in seasons that you would just direct their path, that you would lead them and guide them, that you would just, Lord, help them to connect with people that will encourage them in faith. God, that would be um, strong enough to tell them the truth. Father God, but they would be there to celebrate the good too. Father God, but they'd be there to, God, pick them up at the hard times. And so, Father, I just pray that you would help everybody to, um, Lord, just lean on you in those seasons of change, yes, knowing, Lord. God, that it's um, in that those seasons, Father God, that you're working in and through us, Father God, yes. almost refining. I, I'm you, thinking Jesus. of the of the refining, Father God, that sometimes as we're going through seasons of change, Lord, the temperature gets hot, Father God, but it's so those impurities could come up, Father yeah. God. So I just pray that you would just help us to uh, recognize each part of that process we're in, Father God, and that you would show us, lead us, guide us, equip us. And Father God, let us look back at it, God, and know that you are with us through it all. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, if you're watching this on YouTube, do me a favor. Go down to that bell and click that bell so you can be notified of all future episodes. Also, if you're not subscribed to us on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. And if you're listening to this for the first time, subscribe and click the notification as well. If you are listening to us on Spotify and Apple, thank you so much. Share it so that somebody else can be blessed with this episode. Um, we also want to encourage you tag us on social media so we can see what God's doing in your life and stay connected to everything that we're doing here in the marketplace. You can do that by downloading our app. Anywhere apps are downloaded, there's over 14,000 people in that community now. Glory be to God. And you can join that community. You can just search Game Changer by IPD Agency, and you can download that app. And there's a lot of resources there as well. Hey, we love you guys. We appreciate you. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the Game Changer Podcast. Thank you.